Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about classifications of HVAC chillers based on the compressor type. Our agenda include chiller selection criteria, EER, definition and what is it, how to calculate it, what's the good EER rating, understanding chiller efficiency, ES EER definition and how to calculate it chillers classifications this will be final section of our uh, our today video so let's begin selection criteria for the right chiller when select when selection a chiller for a new or retrofit application the following assessment tasks should be carried out to ensure an appropriate conclusion to be reached. First of all, determine the functional and operational requirements by assessing the cooling load and load profiles including location, hours of operation, numbers, types of occupants, equipment being used etc second determine the required system configuration in terms of number of plant capacity by taking into account the total capacity and operational requirement reliability and maintenance considerations number three identify planning and environmental issues in particular those that would prohibit the use of certain types of equipment or costly treatment or measures required to, un uh, to render the proposed equipment fit for use like for example the uh, phase out of the HCFC and some of the HFC to reach to the new uh, zero ODP and zero or less than 10 GWP effect refrigerants on the other hand the phase out of some uh, DX unit uh, to the new technologies now what is the EER EER is the ratio of useful cooling of output in BTU hour to electricity input measured in watt so EER rating is capacity divided to power In theoretical uh, uh, definition, the EER derives from the COP ratio as follows. COP is equal to T cold divided to T hot minus T cold. Thus, EER is equal to 3.412 multiplied by COP. COP equal also 500 Q DT divided to 3143 P where Q is hot water flow gallon per minute DT temperature difference between supply and return in Fahrenheit and finally P is the input power to pump kilowatt we have to know also the higher the COP that means the more the efficient system the same also the higher the EER is the more efficient system what is a good EER rating for AC unit here we can see for example we have the comparable amount for one unit is EER equal to 8.5 so 
this is the average amount of ER rating for a perfect unit. So compared to this comparable amount, as we are seeing in this table or this uh, diagram, we can see, for example, if we take the rating of 7, that means it will spend 18% more uh, electricity for the same effect. If we take another example, for example, EER 11, it will be 29% less costly to run an EER 11 portable air conditioner. Understanding chiller efficiency. Below are a few simple formulas for converting between various units of energy efficiency for electric motor driving chiller. All of these formulas we can use to calculate COP, kilowatt, per ton, EER, if we know any of this uh, coefficients. If a chiller efficiency is rated at 1 kilowatt per ton, that means if you substitute in the previous formulas here, that mean EER equal to 12 and COP equal to 12 divided to uh, 3.4 equal 3.5 COP. Kilowatt per ton also equal to PC divided to ER where PC is energy consumption kilowatt and ER heat removed per ton. In this uh, diagram we have the rating uh, for the chillers plant uh, with correlated design and operation or operation problem and the new technology for all variable speed chiller plants which is the excellent for kilowatt per ton and COP starting from 0.5 kilowatt uh, per ton and the bad amount is 1.2 where COP is starting from 7 for the good or excellent amount for the new technology and the bad plants having only 2.9 COP. This is the European Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio, which is ES, EER, is provided by the weighted average of performance under four different operational conditions with a constant leaving chilled water temperature of 7 degrees centigrade. The formula with EER can then be presented as follows. ESER equal to EER at 100% load multiplied by 0 0.03 plus EER at 75 percentage load multiplied by 0.33 plus EER at 50% load multiplied by 0.41 plus EER at 25% load multiplied by 0.23. Your event publishes EER and ECR values in its directory of certified products together with cooling capacity and power input for standard conditions at full load for a wide variety of commercially available equipment. An example of such a calculation is shown in this table below. So here we took the amount of the uh, outdoor temperature at uh, 35 degrees centigrade which coming in the 100% load 
and we took the fractional time for that amount is 0 0.03 as the formula and we calculated the fractional the final uh, column of this table showing the calculation as per uh, we substitute in the formula to get 0 0.09 for also we will do the same in the 7 uh, 75 load 75 percent load and at 50 percent load the same also to get in the final column 1.66 and last in the 25 percent load we will get 1.17 if we uh, get the sum of this amount then we will get the ECR for this chiller which is 4.21 Classification of HVAC and industrial chillers. According to this uh, diagram or uh, classification uh, chart, we have the vapor uh, compression chillers, which are the reciprocating, centrifugal, screw and scroll. We have second uh, type of uh, classification we have according to the condenser way of cooling either it is air cooled, water cooled or evaporative cooling and finally we have vapor absorption chillers which are direct fired, indirect fired, lithium bromide uh, water, ammonium water, single effect, double effect and finally single stage or double or multiple stage. This is the vapor compression circuit which has uh, the, the following components which is compressor, condenser, expansion valve and evaporator vapor compression chillers we have the reciprocating which is this photo reciprocating compressors like a reciprocating engine have pistons, rods discharge and intake valves the valves operate on suction and discharge pressure. Compression is achieved by trapping a fixed amount of refrigerant gas into a chamber. Uh, into a chamber. For this reason, reciprocating compressors are positive displacement type compressors. We have the centrifugal, which is this photo. Centrifugal compressors are dynamic compression as refrigerant molecules are flung outward by centrifugal forces new ones are drawn into the compressor to replace them the overall effect is one of continuously compression the stream of refrigerant gas this process of compression allows large volumes of refrigerant gas to be compressed resulting in an in a relatively compact sized chiller the centrifugal compressors are dominant in larger capacities. Centrifugal compressors fall into two board categories, hermetic and open. The compressor driven by the, these motors may be direct drive, where the motor rotor and the impeller are on the same shaft or gear driven. And we have the screw which is this photo. Screw compressors are another version of a positive displacement compression. As the screw rotors turn, the gas is compressed. Screw compressors have one or more rotors to accomplish their compression. Due to these characteristics, positive displacement compressors are best suited to handle smaller volumes of refrigerant gas over high compression ratios. The HVAC industry is trending to phase out reciprocating compressors, favoring screw and scroll compressors. Screw compressors are used in the 70 to 500 ton chiller range in multiples and are also used in both water cooled and air cooled chillers. And we have the scroll, which is this one. Scroll compressors are a popular alternative to reciprocating compressors 
Multiple scroll compressors are often used in a single chiller design and to meet larger capacities. Scroll compressors are 10 to 15 percent more efficient than reciprocating and, and are proven very reliable because they have approximately 60 percent less moving parts. Scroll compressors have a unique compression process, a fixed roll coupled with a movement of an or biting scroll ingests the section gas into several pockets as the orbiting scroll moves the pockets of gas are compressed to an intermediate pressure in a final orbit the packet reach discharge pressure and exit through the discharge port reciprocating and scroll compressors are currently used in the 10 or to 400 ton chillers range and are used in both water cooled and air cooled chillers we have the vapor absorption chillers which the circuit mainly uh, consists of uh, consists of uh, four main components which are the absorber, generator, condenser, and evaporator. Uh, so let's go uh, one by one. We have direct fired. The circuit is uh, this one. And we have indirect uh, fired, which is this one. And we have lithium bromide water. And we have ammonium water. And we have single effect or double effect and finally single stage or double multiple stage what are the types of industrial chillers based on the condenser type we have water cooled chillers the most common types of water chillers use water from an external tower to cool gaseous refrigerant in the condenser. After expelling its heat, the refrigerant undergoes a phase change into a liquid and is recirculated into the system. We have uh, this actually more efficient equator operation but they are costly. We have air cooled chillers which are using the ambient air to reject heat from the refrigerant in the condenser before condensation and recirculation. Additionally, air fans attached to the unit help speed up the cooling process. But they are actually cheaper than water cooled, but they are noisy. Classification of uh, chillers based on the mode of operation. We have vapor compression chillers. Vapor compressor uh, or compression uh, chillers used use compressor to pump refrigerant with which extract unwanted heat from a process. The components of the system are the same as in the absorption type we have an evaporator a condenser and an expansion unit so this is the direct expansion circuit which has the compressor as well as the condenser next the condenser and we have the uh, expansion valve and finally we have the evaporator vapor absorption chillers uh, use a heat source to transport uh, the refrigerant around the system for cooling 
The components of the system are the same in the vapor compressor type chillers, but in place of the compressor, there is an absorber, a pump, and a generator. The heat source can be heated by water or steam. The refrigerant can be a low global warming potential GWP type like R134A or R1234ZE. And the absorption medium can be a solution of lithium bromide or ammonia. The heated water or steam helps generate the absorption solution. A general comparison between the two types of chillers in different characteristics and aspects. First of all, screw chiller. In the full load, it is less durable and less efficient compared to the centrifugal chiller which is more durable and more efficient. But in the part load condition, screw compressor is better than the centrifugal chiller. Compare the rotation speed, the rotational speed. The screw chillers are low speed, thus they are less noisy, while the centrifugal chillers, they are high speed, thus they are more noisy. In the comparing the capacity range for a single compressor, the screw chiller, it is 30 ton to 500 ton while well, the centrifugal chillers are more capacity which is 150 to 3000 tons depend on the manufacturer initial cost also it, it uh, depends on the manufacturer this initial cost in the screw chillers they are higher expensive than centrifugal chillers the power consumption Screw chillers, they are more efficient compared to the centrifugal pumps, uh, centrifugal uh, chillers, which are more power consumption. In the maintenance issues, we have good life circuit uh, or life cycle uh, cost for the screw chillers compared to the centrifugal chiller, which is having more maintenance issues. The space required for the screw chiller is more than the space required for the centrifugal uh, chillers.